Hello and welcome to our service for the 18th of February. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And a gathering prayer. Let us come to the cool, gurgling river to be refreshed and renewed. Let us come to the arid, inhospitable wilderness to be challenged and changed. Let us know we are God's beloved and are to join the kingdom and live out the good news. Amen. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. And a moment for reflection before our confession. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And we prepare to share the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's take a short time and Pray for peace for ourselves, our families and friends, our communities and the wider world. And so we come to our first Bible reading, which comes from 1 Peter 3. Verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading comes from Mark 1, verses 9 to 15. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. 
Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended to him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, here we are at the beginning of Lent. It seems Christmas is barely done and dusted and we are heading for Easter. Ash Wednesday saw those of you who could make it come to St James and some of you received a mark of the cross made with ash on your forehead or hand. I'm hoping most of you have washed it off by now, but that mark in ash is a visible reminder of who we belong to and what he did for us. The signing of the cross in ash is accompanied by the solemn words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. And that turning away from sin and being faithful to Christ can be difficult, even though it makes so much sense. So difficult that we need to say sorry in the words of the confession virtually every time we come to church because we will have messed up and slipped into sinful ways. And in our services, our words of confession, our acknowledgement of our wrongdoing are immediately followed by an assurance of God's forgiveness. This doesn't mean we can just go off and get on with sinning all over again. We need to think about what it is we're getting wrong and why. And we should be sincere in our confession, being penitent and having a contrite heart in the words of the Collect for Ash Wednesday, quoting from Psalm 51 and trying to do better. Sin is bound up with temptation. We want to lead our lives well, but things of the world call us and encourage us to attach too much importance to them and not enough importance to our Christian lives and our spiritual well-being. It's not easy to resist the siren voices, the temptation to neglect what we should be doing and thinking about and to behave in ways which are not edifying or pleasing to God. Our faith is never as strong as we would like it to be and we are easily distracted and taken away from the right path. It is easy to fall away for other reasons too. We all have challenges in life. Because being a Christian does not mean we are exempt from troubles and difficulties and we can let these drive us far from God. We are tempted to give up on God because we blame him for letting bad things happen to us or to others who are close to us. There is another way. We can seek God out in our troubles, confident that this is exactly where he will be found. Mark is not the most verbose of gospel writers and our gospel reading this morning takes us in a few words from Jesus' baptism by his cousin John to Jesus spending time in the wilderness and being tempted by the devil. When he is baptised, he hears his father affirming him. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This must have been a real high point for Jesus a confirmation that he was doing right and obeying his father. Then he goes into the wilderness, driven there by the spirit, according to Mark, far away from human comfort in an arid desert. There he struggles with who he is 
and what he should be. Matthew and Luke give more detail than Mark and centre this struggle on the temptation of the devil, as Jesus is advised to turn stones into bread, to test God by leaping from a great height, to worship Satan in exchange for power over all the world. Jesus struggled. Yes, he was a perfect man, but he was holy man, as well as being wholly divine, and he struggled. So we are not alone in our struggles, in our problems with who we are and how we should behave. We are not alone in needing affirmation. We are not alone in our heart searching. Jesus has been there before us and knows and understands. He knows and understands from his own experiences that we humans need approval and affirmation and that we sometimes seek this in destructive or self-indulgent ways. He understands that we slip and fall and need to say sorry time after time. When we reflect on our faith lives, as we are encouraged to do in Lent, this shouldn't be a miserable exercise of self-blame. Wanting to do this is a sign of the work of the Spirit, a sign of our closeness to God, not our distance from him. And saying sorry to God is not a weakness. It's an opening up of the possibility of a new start, of a new life. Lent is a time of reflection on the past, but can also lead to a new beginning, a rededication of our lives to God. So this Lent, let us be properly penitent, but also hopeful. We have forgiveness and we have Jesus alongside us to help us to fulfil all that God wants us to do and has planned for us. Let's pray. God of justice, we thank you that you do not remember our sins and the failings of our community and nation, but you remember us according to your love. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins and teach us to be faithful to your ways. Give us humility and wisdom that we might journey through Lent as a people worthy of your name and that of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm just going to shut the door. So we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now our time of prayer. We open the papers and don't know how to pray. We turn on the radio and don't know how to pray. We flick the through the TV channels and don't know how to pray. We listen to our neighbour's story 
and don't know how to pray. We have no words. We don't know what to ask for at a loss as to how to deal with the distress and suffering around us. And so we hold our hurting world before you, Lord, and ask you to intercede for us. And as we wait on you in the quiet of our hearts, we begin to feel the pain of devastation where people have lost loved ones, homes and livelihoods, swept away by the destructive power of water, wind or drought. We begin to feel the pain of destruction where people's lives have been blown apart by the effects of war or unrest. We begin to feel the pain of injustice where people do not have good health, sufficient food, water and shelter or fail to flourish because of poverty or oppression. We open the papers and we begin to feel your pain. We turn on the radio and we begin to feel your pain. We flick through the TV channels and we begin to feel your pain. We listen to our neighbour's story and we begin to feel your pain. And so we hold our hurting world and our hurting selves before you and ask you to begin to change our hearts, to inspire us to action and to answer our prayers. Amen. And we pray for those we know who are sick, thinking especially of Uggy, Mervyn, Siobhan, Kim and Harry, Pam Johnson, Mike Jones, Kenneth Bannum, Tim Newman, Hilary Capsis, Betty Knight Collins, Guy Negus, John Ambrose, Pam Cotgrove, Peter, King Charles and all those with a cancer diagnosis. We also think of Morris, Cena and family as they mourn the loss of Brother Dave. So do take a moment to pray now for healing and wholeness for those who are on your heart. We pray, Lord, that those for whom we have prayed now will know your care and compassion and that you will show us too how we might help and support them. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And our collect, our special prayer for today, the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so some notices. Um, the Churches Together Lent groups will be taking place at the URC Church in Church Road from 7.15 on Wednesdays during Lent. 
So they start next Wednesday, the 21st, and then 28th of February, the 6th, 13th and 20th of March. So all are welcome, 7.15 Wednesdays at the URC Church as we look at the gift of Christ together. At our Zoom prayers at 6 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays du during Lent, we are looking at the Stations of the Cross and joining instructions are on our newsletter. A World Day of Prayer event is being held at St Michael's Doors Heath on Friday the 1st of March at 2 o'clock. The Narrow Road, an Easter drama, is to be performed at the Cathedral at 7 o'clock on Wednesday the 13th of March. Entrance is free. The Bishop's Lent appeal is for the Diocese of Jerusalem's Healthcare Ministry, which includes Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Israel and the Palestinian territories. Essential health care is offered to those in need regardless of race, religion or ability to pay. And of course, that help and support is needed more now than ever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>